Hello, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and today we're going to continue learning about graphing in the TI-89 calculator. And specifically we're going to talk about graphing styles, changing your graph styles. It's especially helpful when you have two or three or four graphs on a screen. Uh, you know, they're all curvy and, and looking kind of uh, you know, like an intertangled mess. Uh, if you can give each graph a little bit of a different um, style to it. So we're going to do that here. So let, let's go into the Y equals menu. And let's start off by just putting two simple functions in here. We'll do x to the third, okay? And the next function, let's do x plus 4. So we'll put two functions in there. We'll go ahead and graph them, convince ourselves that, that uh, the graphing is working correctly. So that's what we have there. That's the first function. Second function is going to be up a little bit higher. Uh, because we had the x plus 3 there. Now let's go back into the y equals menu. First thing I want to show you before I show you about the graph styles is notice the check marks here. That means that, and when you type in a new function, a check mark will automatically be there. What that means is the graph will be uh, will be graphed. But if you decide uh, you don't want to delete this guy, maybe you, you're still using it or still needing it, but you don't want to continue to graph it every time. Maybe it's taking a long time to graph it, uh, but you want to keep it here for future use. Just go up here to F4. You see the check mark up here? When you hit F4, the check mark disappears. If you hit F4 again, check mark comes back. So let's turn it off, and you can probably guess what's going to happen is the, uh, the first graph, the x to the third graph, is going to be plotted, but the other graph will not. So it's a, it's a nice, handy way of disabling and kind of controlling your graph, especially if you press for time, without actually deleting functions. Maybe you have a really long function here. You don't want to get rid of it, but you don't want to graph it. That's a really useful. All right. The other thing I'll say is, uh, what if you have, you know, x minus nine here, uh, and you want to, for whatever reason, do something to affect all of these guys? Go up to the All menu, F5, which is right here, All. You can turn all functions off and turn them all back on again. So if you wanted to do something to grossly affect all of them, instead of individually unchecking, you know, ten different functions, just hit All off all of the check marks will disappear and if we go to the graph then nothing will be graphed at all so if we go back to the all menu number five and turn them all back on again uh, then the check marks will uh, reappear so that's basically a really quick way to be able to to handle that now the next thing I want to do is give you another example of of these graphing styles and how they can be useful so let's put another guy in here four graphs let's, let's say this is X uh, squared. Actually, let's make it just to make it different. Let's make it negative x squared minus two. So that's our function. So we have four functions. Let's go ahead and graph them all and just see what they look like. All right. The first guy is going to be x cubed. That makes sense. We've been looking at that one. Second guy is going to be a, a line that shifted up. The third guy is going to be a line that shifted down, and the fourth one is going to be a parabola that's upside down and shifted down. So you can see that this kind of gets to be a cluttered mess. I mean it's not too bad with four of them, but if you had five or six graphs, which it's unlikely that you'll have that many on the screen at once, but if you did, it would be really difficult to keep track of everything. So what you can do is go into the Y equals menu and sort of change the style of these guys. So if you highlight the first one, go into the style menu, F6, which is second function. So you have F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. To get to F6, you have to do second function up here. It'll tell you that this is currently a line. And if you were to go and look at all of these, they would all be lines because the calculator is going to default to graphing lines. Let's change it to dot. So we'll hit number two. And you can convince yourself that that accepted it because when we go back in, you'll see number two, uh, this, this guy is going to be a dot now. All right. So actually, just to make it a little bit clearer, let's go into the style menu of six. Let's change this guy back to line by hitting number one. So this is a line. Let's change this one to a dot. Let's change the third one to a square. And let's change the fourth one to thick. And we'll talk about the ones under that in a second. So we have four different plot styles. Let's go look at our graph and see what happens. So the first guy that gets plotted looks normal. That's the line. Second guy is not so different, but a little bit different. The third one is a thicker line. 
and the fourth one is a little bit different. So you see there's not that much difference between you know this guy, the second line style that we chose in the first one. You can sort of see by looking at this that the screen resolution just isn't high enough for it to look too different. But if we zoom in here a little bit, you'll be able to tell. Let's go up here to the zoom menu, F2. Let's go and do zoom box. And maybe if we catch it and go a little bit tighter in it, we'll be able to see how these look a little bit different. So let's go and catch these first two. And let's see what we have. It may or may not work. It just depends on, on the function that you plot, if it's going to look any different. So there's the line. And so you see the second one's really not all that different. Okay, so to try to pull a little bit more out of that, let's go and change the second guy to, let's make it look a little bit similar to the, to the first graph that we have, just to see if we can get it uh, to be any different. So let's go and make it x cubed plus 1. So this is a line and this is a dot. We're going to make these graphs a little bit more similar in shape and just see if that can actually make, make the difference between these guys show up a little bit more. So first guy is a line. This is graphed as a line. And then the next guy graphed as a dot. So you can sort of see now a little bit more about how they, how they line up. Basically these are the two same graphs one is shifted up. It was a little hard to see before because the graphs were totally different. Bottom line is the difference between line and dot is not going to be very very apparent unless the graph shape is right and that's just because there's not that many pixels on the screen. But certainly if we go back out to zoom standard and back out uh, to our normal zoom then we'll be able to see at least the difference between the lines and the uh, the thicker ones that we used before. The, the, the square and actually you can sort of see the, uh, the dotted one looks a little bit different here. So here's a thicker one and then the last one that we had, the last line style is not quite as thick. So bottom line is you can certainly get it to look a little bit different um, by using the line styles but don't expect miracles. I mean the, the, the display resolution here is just not a, a color computer screen so you're not going to get anything crazy but you can definitely make them look a little bit different especially if you choose something thick and something thin. So that's really useful. Now, next thing I want to tell you is uh, let's go in here and let me go ahead and uh, you know go ahead and delete this guy. Let me clear this guy out, and I'll clear uh, the next guy out. We'll hit clear there. We'll clear that one. Now let's go over here and let's draw a different graph. Negative. Uh, we'll do x squared, and you'll see. I think. Let me hit enter first. Negative x squared. I think you'll see in a second why I'm choosing this. So let's go ahead and, and do that. What it's going to look like, let's go ahead and graph it first before we do anything else. It's going to be an upside down parabola. It's going to go up, it's going to peak, it's going to come back down. Now if we go in here back into the style menu, F6, we've already looked at lines, dots, square, and thick. That's to make your graphs look a little different. Let's go to number six, path. We're going to change this to path. Well actually we need to highlight this first then go to F6 and then go to number 6 path. So we've changed it to path and if you wanted to verify that that was the case you could go up here and just take a look at it and you'll see it's set to path. Second function graph, let's look what happens. The graph is graphed normally but notice there's a cursor at the top here kind of blinking as it kind of graphs here. You can sort of imagine that as uh, occasionally you might want to graph that, especially if you had like maybe 10 other graphs on the screen and then you graphed an 11th function. It might be nice to have a cursor showing the way just so you can kind of keep your eyes on it. It's also kind of useful if you're doing a physics problem where you're throwing a ball or something and, and so you can kind of visualize the ball moving. So that's why I drew the parabola upside down uh, there to kind of help you visualize that. So that is path. Now if you go back into the style menu and go right above path, let's look at animate. So we'll set it to animate and we'll graph it again. So now the exact same thing is going to happen. The cursor is going to go up, but notice it is not leaving a graph behind. So this one's really used exactly like I said. If you're solving a motion problem, you want to look at the path of the baseball, maybe it's useful for you to do that. It doesn't leave a graph behind, it just shows you the cursor. So it's kind of visualizing a football or a baseball or a projectile. Not too often you're going to use that, but I did want to show you that. So we've covered in the style menu the different ways to make the graphs look different. Animate means it's just like a ball being thrown. Path means you see the ball, so to speak, plus you see the graph. Okay, next I want to show you 
what above and below means. So let's go, since I drew this one upside down, let's set below here. The last two guys, they're shading options. This is shading below the graph, this is shading above the graph. So let's set it to number eight, and let's go ahead and graph it. So your equation is going to graph normally, but it's going to shade below, because we set it to below. Uh, if we go back in there, all right, set a new guy, let's do uh, x plus one, and let's go set the shading style on that one. Instead of below, let's choose above, number seven. Okay, so now I think you can probably figure out that the line is gonna be shaded above. If we chose below, then it would shade below here. In fact, just for giggles, let's go in and change it. Let's go and set this guy to also below. So what we're gonna have is kind of an intersection of those two graphs. The first guy is gonna graph normally, shading below. Okay, the second graph is going to be shaded also, and it's going to intersect with our other graph. So it's kind of useful if you're graphing two functions and you want to see where they might intersect. If you're doing calculus, area under the curve, if you're doing algebra of conic sections, it's useful to be able to see it like that. And you can easily see where these guys intersect. So it's it's useful in that regard. It's not something you're going to do every day, but it is kind of useful. Notice the this one's horizontally shaded, this one's vertically shaded. You cannot change which one is which. It's going to automatically assign a shading pattern to it but you can just tell it above or below. Um, so that's basically it. Now, if we go in here, I think I've covered most everything that I wanna cover. In the style menu, we've covered how to make the graphs look different, how to animate the paths, and how to shade above and below. And we've also talked about, in this guy here, we've turned all the functions off by removing the check marks. Nothing would be graphed. We can turn them back on. Now, if you go down here to reset styles, then if you've done a lot of monkeying around with different shapes, uh, different shading patterns, different uh, uh, graphing uh, styles, and you want to change it back to normal, just go hit number four, and that resets everything back. And then we go back to our graph, and we'll see that there's no shading, there's nothing fancy going on, everything is, is shaded exactly in the normal way. So that is a good lesson in graphing style. It's not something you'll use every day. I think most students will graph two, maybe three equations at once. Um, so just having it in the normal style is fine. But in that one instance, when you've got two graphs right on top of each other, or maybe five graphs right on top of each other, and you really need to differentiate styles, then it is useful to go into the style menu and change the style around, change the shading around so you can more easily see what you're doing. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. I hope you've learned something here. Grab your calculator play around with it. It's fun and it's something you can get good at, help you save time on your exams and on your homework.